Stay with me, young man, Anna said quietly. We can help her. I'm sure we can. Later that morning, Sarah went to the front of the courtroom. Her face was very white, and her eyes were red with crying. Her lawyer, Mr. Cheng, began to ask her questions. Now, Miss Harland, why did you come to this country? He asked quietly and smiled at her. Because I like going to different countries. I want to meet new people. And why were you with this young man? Because... Sarah stopped and looked down at her feet. Nobody could see her face. She began again, very quietly. But nobody could hear her. I'm sorry, we can't hear you. Can you say that again, please? Sarah looked up. She looked quickly at her mother and then at her son. Because I love him. Anna felt old and tired. She looked at the tall young man with the beautiful dark eyes. It was his heroine, she thought. I'm sure it was. He buys and sells heroin, and he put it in my daughter's bag. And now she says she loves him. Stephen sat next to her. He did not move, and he watched Sarah all the time. But she did not look at him. Mr. Cheng waited a minute, and then he questioned Sarah again. Did you know about the heroin in those tubes of toothpaste? he asked. No, Sarah said quickly. Of course I didn't. And what about Hassan? Did he know about the heroine? Please think about your answer. No, I'm sure he didn't know. It wasn't our heroine. Sarah's blue eyes were angry. We didn't put the heroine in the toothpaste tubes. We're innocent. Thank you, Miss Harlan. Mr. Cheng said quietly, and sat down. The police lawyer stood up. Miss Harland, how much money did you have in your bag? Um, about fifty pounds, I think. That's not very much. This is an expensive country, you know. How much can you buy with your fifty pounds? Sarah did not have an answer. Um, I don't know, she began. I usually live very cheaply. Did you need more money? The lawyer's questions came quickly now. Of of course you needed more money. You wanted to sell that heroin. You wanted to be rich. Is that right? No, no, that's not true. The lawyer said nothing for a minute. He looked at the jury and smiled. Then he said, Do you think toothpaste is very expensive in this country, Miss Harland? Uh, no. I don't think... Uh, 
I don't know. Well, I can tell you, it isn't. Toothpaste is cheap here. So why did you bring three tubes of toothpaste with you? How often do you clean your teeth, Miss Harland? Six times a day? Or seven? Or eight times a day, perhaps? Sarah looked very unhappy. No, I don't know. Hassan! Yes? The lawyer said quickly. Hassan! Are you going to say, Hassan gave it to me? You love this young man, but you don't want to die. Nobody wants to die. And now you're going to say, it was Hassan's toothpaste. Is that your answer, Miss Harland? No, Sarah said angrily. Of course not. It was my toothpaste, but thank you, Miss Harland. The police lawyer sat down. I have no more questions. Chapter 4 At one o'clock, the judge left the court for an hour. Anna Harland talked to Sarah for ten minutes. Sarah cried at first. I don't like that police lawyer, she said. Those questions were very difficult. I couldn't answer them. It doesn't matter, her mother said. Your lawyer, Mr. Cheng, is very good. And Stephen is here too now. We're all going to help you. Sarah was angry. Don't talk to me about Stephen, she said. I don't like him. I don't want to see him here. But Sarah, he was your boyfriend for two years. He wants to help you. Sarah began to cry again. Perhaps he does want to help me. I don't know. But he's different now, Mother. You don't understand. His eyes are different. They're... I don't know. And he can't sit quietly and talk to people now. His body is moving all the time. He came to see me in our hotel the night before we came to this country, and I didn't like him, Mother. Why is he here? He doesn't love me now, and I don't love him. Anna listened carefully to her daughter. And then she went to see Mr. Cheng and Inspector Aziz. Stephen went with her. Who made that phone call to the police at the airport? she asked. We need to know that. Yes, Mr. Cheng said. That's very important. Can the police tell us? Perhaps, the inspector said. But it's very difficult. It was not a long telephone call. And the man didn't give his name. Perhaps he was a policeman, and he knew about the heroine. Perhaps, Mr. Cheng said. But then, perhaps... He put the heroine there, and he wanted the police to find it. Perhaps someone doesn't like your daughter, Mrs. Harland. I don't know, Anna said slowly, but perhaps... 
But then the judge came back into the courtroom, and everybody stopped talking. The judge then called Hassan. Hassan stood up and went to the front of the courtroom. He's a rich boy, Anna thought. That shirt and those shoes are very expensive. Hassan stood there, tall and very quiet. He waited for the questions. He did not look afraid. But when Mr. Cheng looked at his papers and asked the first question, Hassan closed his eyes. Did you know about the heroin in those tubes of toothpaste? No, sir. Did Sarah know? No, sir. Who bought the toothpaste? Hassan closed his eyes again for two or three seconds. Then he answered, I did, sir. You did? You're sure of that? Yes, sir. I'm sure. I clean my teeth a lot, you see. Hassan smiled for a moment. Well, he does have very white teeth. Anna thought. Sarah, Hassan began. Then he stopped. Yes. Again, Hassan closed his eyes and waited for a second. Then he looked at the jury and said very loudly, Sarah did not buy the toothpaste. I bought it. I bought all three tubes of toothpaste. It was my toothpaste. Anna sat up in her chair and looked carefully at Hassan. That's interesting, she thought. Perhaps he does love Sarah. I see, Mr. Cheng said. And when did you first meet? Sarah Harland. About two months ago, I was in Australia. We were in the same hotel. She had a, a difficult time with her boyfriend, and I helped her. Anna looked at Stephen. He was very angry, and he hit the chair in front of him with his hand. I see, Mr. Cheng said again. Then he asked his next question. Do you usually carry a lot of money? How much money did you have at the airport? About eighty pounds, I think. That's okay. When I need more money, I get some work for a week or two. We don't need much money. And do you sometimes take heroin? No, sir. Never. Thank you. Stay there, please. Mr. Cheng sat down, and the police lawyer stood up. He smiled at Hassan but it was not a nice smile. Now, Hassan, you bought the toothpaste, but it was in Miss Harlan's bag. Why? Why did she carry it for you? Or do you always ask your women to carry things for you? He smiled. Hassan said nothing. The lawyer began again. You had eighty pounds, you say. But eighty thousand pounds is better than eighty pounds, I think. What do you think? Of course it is. 
But I don't sell heroin. It's wrong to sell heroin. The lawyer moved his papers on the table. He looked at the jury. So, you are a very good young man with very clean teeth, but no money. You met a young English girl. She was unhappy with her boyfriend, so you helped her and took her away with you. Is that right? Oh dear, it's not a very good story, you know. I don't believe it, and I don't think the jury believes it, young man. He stopped for a minute. Then he looked at Hassan and said loudly, "You don't love Sarah Harland." And she doesn't love you. You went with her because she could help you, and she went with you because she wanted the money. She carried the heroin for you to sell. That's right, isn't it? You put the heroin in the toothpaste tubes, and she knew about it. Is that the true story, young man? I think it is. No, I. Hassan began angrily, but the lawyer did not listen. He sat down. I have no more questions, he said to the judge. Chapter Five. The judge looked at his papers, and then at the jury. It is now four o'clock in the afternoon, he said. We can begin again in the morning. Please be here at ten o'clock. The judge stood up, and left the courtroom. The jury left too. And the police took Sarah and Hassan back to the prison. Anna looked at Stephen. Well, young man, she said, what can we do now? We have sixteen hours before tomorrow morning. I don't know, Stephen said. He looked at her for a minute. Then he looked away, over her head, at the front of the court. I'm sure Hassan knew about the heroin, he said. He put it in her bag. I'm sure he did. Sarah is innocent, but he isn't. Mister Cheng came and stood with them. She's innocent. Stephen said again, "But Hassan's going to die." Mister Cheng looked at Stephen carefully. Perhaps, he said slowly. But did you listen to Hassan in court? He said, "Sarah did not buy the toothpaste. It was my toothpaste." Now, why did he say that? It was not an easy thing to say, you know. What is the jury going to think about it? It doesn't matter," Stephen said angrily. "Because it wasn't toothpaste, and he didn't buy it in a shop. He made those tubes because he wanted to sell the heroin." And he's going to die. That's the law in this country. Anna looked at Stephen, and said nothing. He's very angry, she thought. His face is red, and he's talking very quickly. 
Does he want to kill Hassan? And what's the matter with his eyes? Mr. Cheng watched Stephen too. But who made that telephone call? It's important, and I want to know," he said. "I'm going to ask the police now. Would you like to come with me, Mrs. Harland?" "Yes, of course," Anna said. "Stephen, are you coming?" "Yes. Uh, no, no," Stephen said. I'm going to meet a man. I think he can help us. All right, Anna said. But when can I meet you? I need to talk to you about Hassan. Can I come to your hotel tonight? Er,、uh, no, not tonight, Stephen said quickly. His face was now white. And he looked tired and ill. His hands and body moved all the time. Come to my hotel tomorrow morning. Bye. He walked quickly out of the courtroom. Anna and Mister Cheng watched him. Inspector Aziz was near the door, and he watched Stephen too. Chapter Six. Anna and Mr. Cheng talked to the police, but the police could tell them nothing more about the telephone call to the airport. Inspector Aziz telephoned two or three people, and then he talked to Anna again. When Anna left Inspector Aziz. She was much happier. Then she went to the prison to see Sarah. The man took her to Sarah's room. Anna and Sarah sat at the table, and the man stood and watched. It was a bad day, Mother. I'm sorry, Sarah said slowly. Her eyes were not red now, but she looked very tired. Her hands were near her mother's on the table. It wasn't a very good day, that's true, Anna said. But you have a very good lawyer, you know. The jury likes him. But it doesn't help. Sarah said, "There was heroin in the toothpaste tubes, and the tubes were in my bag. What can Mister Cheng do? The heroin was in my bag, Mother. The jury knows that." Anna looked at her daughter carefully. Perhaps Hassan put it there, Sarah," she said. "You like him, I know, and he looks nice. But, mother, I love him. I said that in court. You heard me. And Hassan loves me too. And he does not buy or sell heroin. I." Sarah stopped talking, and put her hands on her stomach. "What's the matter?" Anna asked. She looked at the man. "Quickly, she's ill. Get a doctor." The man ran from the room, and Anna put her arms round her daughter. She waited, and then Sarah sat up. It's all right, mother," she said. Her face was very white, but she looked a little better. It happens sometimes. I often feel ill, 
and I don't like to eat much. But it's not very bad. I think I'm going to stay alive because of it. She gave her mother a smile. What? What are you saying? What are you talking about? Anna cried. My baby. Sarah's face looked different now, half smiling, half afraid. Mother, don't be angry, please. I'm going to have a baby. It's Hassan's baby. I, we wanted to come to England, and tell you about it there, but now we can't. I love him. And he wants to be my husband, mother. Mother, please don't be angry. Anna's face was white now. For nearly a minute, she could say nothing. She wanted to cry, but she didn't. At last, she said, "Oh, Sarah." What's going to happen to this baby? Sarah looked at her hands. Nothing, mother. I asked Mister Cheng about that. They can't kill me, you see, because I'm going to have a baby. They can't kill a mother and her baby. That's the law. But. That doesn't help Hassan. Anna heard a noise, and looked at the door. Listen, Sarah, she said quickly. Before the doctor comes. I'm not angry, and I do love you, Sarah. Of course. But listen. I talked to Inspector Aziz again today. I think he can help you. And Hassan too. So don't be afraid, please. And the door opened, and the man came in with a woman doctor. Anna stood up. She took Sarah's hand. I'm going now, Sarah. But don't be afraid. You're going to be all right. I'm sure of it. Chapter Seven. Next morning, at half past four, Anna Harlan stood in a quiet road in front of a hotel. She waited, and then she heard a car behind the hotel. The car doors opened and closed. She waited quietly, and then looked down the road. A man walked into the road, and stood next to a shop. He did not look at Anna, but Anna looked at him, and smiled. Then she walked into the hotel. She went upstairs, and knocked on the door of a bedroom. A man answered. "Who is it?" "It's me, Stephen." She said, "Anna Harland, open the door, please. I want to talk to you." The door opened, and Stephen looked out slowly. Anna, what are you doing here at this time? It's Anna walked quickly into the room. Yes, it's half past four. Sarah is in court again at ten o'clock. I need your help, young man. Please get up. But what can I do? Anna looked at him. You went to see a man last night. What happened? Can he help, Sarah? Stephen answered slowly. He did not look at Anna. No, I'm sorry. 
He can't. Anna was cold and angry. I see, she said. Well, can you and I help her then? Tell me, Stephen, what do you know about Hassan? Hassan? Stephen said angrily. Well, we met him in Australia, and Sarah went away with him. She doesn't understand him, but I do. He's a rich young man with a beautiful body. He likes playing with girls, but he doesn't love her. And do you love her, Stephen? Stephen did not answer at once. For two or three seconds, Anna waited. He doesn't know, she thought. He can't answer the question. Yes, Mrs. Harland, of course I love her. But he's not looking at me, Anna thought. He's looking out of the window. He's not thinking about Sarah. Stephen, Anna asked quietly, did you go to see Sarah and Hassan in Australia the night before they came to this country? Stephen looked up at her. Uh, yes, I went to their hotel, he said. I asked Sarah to leave Hassan and come back to me. But how did you know that? Sarah told me, of course. Was Hassan there? Uh, no, he... Stephen stopped. Then he said, Why do you ask? Anna opened her handbag. Look at this, she said. What is it? Do you know? He looked at it, and then at Anna. A tube of toothpaste. Why? That's right. A policeman gave it to me, and he took it from a man. You met that man last night, Stephen. You gave him ten tubes of toothpaste. What was in those tubes of toothpaste, Stephen? Stephen said nothing. He looked at the toothpaste and stood up. But Anna was between him and the door. She gave the toothpaste to him. Would you like to clean your teeth, Stephen? He began to move to the door. But Anna took his arm. You don't love Sarah, do you, Stephen? You hate her because she left you. You put three of these tubes in Sarah's bag, and then you phoned the police. You told them about the tubes in my daughter's bag. You want Sarah to die. No, Stephen said. No, no, not Sarah. Hassan! I put them in Hassan's bag, not Sarah's. I wanted Hassan to die. He opened the door quickly and then stopped. A man stood there, Inspector Aziz. He put his hand on Stephen's arm. It's an old story, young man, he said. It happens every day. My first girlfriend left me for a new man. I was very angry, too. I hated him. But I didn't want to kill him. Come on, let's go. You can tell your story to the judge. Chapter 8 at eleven o'clock that morning, Sarah and Hassan were free. Sarah stood with her mother, Inspector Aziz, 
and Mr. Cheng. She smiled happily. Mother, you're wonderful. Now I can be happy. But how did you know about Stephen? Inspector Aziz answered. Young woman, he said, remember, your mother is a doctor. She knew Stephen was ill because of his eyes and his body. His eyes are very big and dark, and his body is always moving. Well, yes, Anna said. But you helped me, Sarah. You said he was different, remember? And I looked at him carefully and began to think. Heroin does that to people. He did a very bad thing, Sarah said slowly. But I feel sorry for him now. When is he going to court, Inspector? I don't know, the inspector said. In two weeks, perhaps. But don't think about him. Would you like to see our beautiful country, Mrs. Harland? Where would you like to go? Anna smiled at him. Thank you, but I can't stay. Tomorrow I'm going back to England to talk to Stephen's mother and father. Inspector Aziz looked at her and said nothing for a minute. Then he said quietly, Yes. I feel very sorry for them. It kills a lot of young people, this heroin. Yes, but it isn't going to kill my daughter. She isn't going to die now. Anna took Sarah's hand. So thank you again, Inspector Aziz and Mr. Cheng. And goodbye. Now I'm going to have a long, cold drink in a quiet garden with my daughter and her new young man. I want to know a lot more about him. Hassan stood with his mother and father near the door of the court. Anna Harland put her hand on her daughter's arm and smiled at them.